Hey everyone, giving you an update on Project 200. Final assembly has been started and is in progress. Getting everything installed in the engine bay. Uh, got all the pipes polished from this side from our buddy Jim. Got all the turbos mounted. So we ended up coming up with this idea uh, where it's gonna use these little rubber couplers and then it will tie into the hood. The hood's over here. So here's the hood. And so the turbos do stick out a little bit, had a notch the hood for that. And then it was either gonna be kind of like an oval or whatever, but we're thinking if you go with just a round piece that'll help seal against those rubber couplers, then that'll help with that. And then it'll have to be finished off on the hood and all of that. But uh, so ended up doing some exhaust wrap here to keep some of the heat out. Intakes on it, injectors are in it. Uh, ended up doing like 225 billet atomizers. Gonna still have to do like the catch cans and everything off the valve covers. We still gotta figure out where that's gonna go and fit because it is getting extremely tight in the engine bay as you guys can see. Otherwise it's all coming together. And then we got all the other pipe for here. Uh, starting to get all the wastegates in. I can show you guys in a video I made. So we ended up pulling the covers out of these off and then putting the six pound springs in them. We set up the wastegates. They give you a bunch of springs actually from the, uh, what it comes with this, I think the red and the green in it, which ends up starting out at 15 pounds of boost. Since we have the CO2 boost controller, we're just gonna put like the six pound spring in it and just run the one spring. So then when the boost controller's not on, just cruising down the road, it'll be on six pounds. And then we'll have to turn the boost controller on for anything above six pounds. We could literally just put like the one and a half pound spring in it and control it all with CO2. But if you want to play around on the street and not have to turn everything on, then we put six pound spring in it. Still make some decent power, but not get too aggressive. And everything else, uh, we're thinking we're going to plumb from here over to like the inner cooler for that side of the wastegate. Starting to get all the wiring in. Uh, my dad ended up making a custom bracket to hold all the coils down here. And then, so we're waiting on the coil wires to get in. Then those will get built, put plugs in it. Got everything, we uh, primed the engine. So I'll go ahead and show you guys, I made a little video of how we primed the engine. I'll go ahead and put that in there now. I'm building this little oil primer. Uh, it's out of like a Harbor Freight sandblaster. Just ended up hooking up a, uh, we hook up like a little regulator to this side. Makes it like 60 or 70 pounds of oil pressure and then it pushes the oil through. So in most of the LS blocks, this is a dart. You guys might be able to see it in there. Um, back behind the alternator, there's like a little plug. That's the oil galley that feeds from the oil pump. So we end up tapping into it. You can pull the plug out. Uh, this is the plug out of the dart block. This is the plug out of like a factory block that we tapped and put a 6A in on. Uh, so we'll adapt it over to a 6A in again. Use this little adapter here. And then we can go ahead and prime this engine. Uh, so you end up just putting your oil in here, adding pressure to it, and it pushes the oil in. And then we'll turn it over like an eighth of a turn every so often as we add oil. And we'll put the full like five quarts through that and then just add the other two or whatever. Um, you can just put the whole seven through that if you need to. But this way the oil has, uh, the engine has oil all the way through it. So it's a good way to prime it. The only other way to do that is to fill it and just crank the engine over until the oil pump picks it up and feeds the engine. So it's a lot easier way to do it. All right, so we got it all hooked up. As you guys can see, it goes in there to the fitting. It's back out, go and get some oil put in it, prime it. All right, so we're gonna go and put the oil in there. We're gonna put about five quarts in the tank. And then we set the regulator at 40 PSI to help push it through. And then we end up having a couple control valves to where we can turn it on and off and let the oil flow in. And then every once in a while, uh, we'll stop every maybe few minutes and uh, release all the air out of it and then pull the cap and check how much oil's in it so we can watch. So we're not just pushing a bunch of air into the uh, engine as well. Usually you can hear that the air start going in, but just to make sure where we're at. So we'll go ahead and get that and then we'll pressurize it and start feeding it. Ahead and opened up the valve and filled this tank with air. You can hear it, and now it's pretty quiet. Um, and then we're turning over the, the flywheel with a flywheel wrench every so often. So you can, it's really easy. We don't have any plugs or anything in it, so not a lot of compression or anything, not fighting us. So just keep turning it over and keep letting the oil fill. Filling it, we're 
we're checking for some oil leaks, has just a little drip coming out of the uh, turbo speed, so we know that it's going all the way up to the turbos and everything right now. We ended up having to pull the valve cover off to put the dipstick in, but as you guys can see, there's oil in the whole head and everything. So it pushes it right up through there, gets into the turbo, gets into the rockers, all the way through the engine, so it's a really good way to prime. So we ended up getting the engine all primed up, the interior and some of the wiring starting to come together. So we got the steering column all in it. This is the control for the Restomod air. So the car does have heat and air, but this is a little controller that you'll use for it. Now uh, you can control it like off your phone and everything else, but blends in. This was, hey, what was this originally? That was the controls. No, all oh, was it? That was the spot, the gap for it, and then I made the little. Okay, so that was the original heater controls. So it actually ended up going in there pretty. I made the little bracket and stuff and then moved it out so it set flush. Set flush, painted it. Uh, ended up doing all the trim to make the dash work. I'll show you guys, we got the dash with the Holly dash in it. It's all covered. The dash, it'll set up right there. But really cool piece. Kind of covered it in suede with that aluminum piece I showed. So ended up doing that. The Holly dash kind of mounts here. And then it also mounts to the side right there. And on this side here and there. So it's all mounted in, got some turn signal lights, and then this is some of the stock controls here. So still reincorporated that, but was able to modify it over for the poly dash. And then all this starting to get put in, like the parachute cable, the fire bottle that'll wrap around and tie to the fire bottle over there in that corner. Got the uh, wiring here for the trans brake and bump button. Starting to put all that in here, getting all the wires ran up. This is for the alternator and stuff like that. These here are the little harnesses that we made that will come back from the sensors and tie into the holly. So I'm gonna start doing a bunch of, uh, I'm gonna make a wiring video. Probably the next video that I post of the car will be like wiring of the holly and all that. I started placing like uh, tags on everything where we're running like the fans, the boost controller, all of that stuff to get an idea. So when it's in here, we can we'll just have to terminate everything and make it all work. Here we got, so we ended up getting a carbon drive shaft, it's in, everything's in here. Was waiting to do the like shocks and springs because we need to weigh the car to figure out how heavy it is and figure out what shocks and springs it is. Uh, get the brakes all bled and everything else is pretty much in, like the sway bar, anti-roll bar, everything's all together there. Uh, ended up installing the Motion Raceworks little drive shaft sensor and everything, wired it and put a plug so it all unplugs and everything. The trunk's pretty much been complete since the last video, but if you haven't seen it, got all the wiring. These little MSD uh, solid state relays are really cool. And then all that's the same, switches for the pumps and everything. So that's pretty much all done. Got the charge port for the 16 volt. And then in here is where all the holly's gonna mount. So if you haven't done it, you gotta a car, that's where all the fun is, is tons and tons of wire. So this mount here is for the Dominator ECU. So that's gonna make it easy. Another MSD relay there, got all our power. And then all this stuff is gonna have to be tied into the Dominator, tucked away. Transmission, little access panel so you can pull the carpet back, get to the tranny, check all the fluids. Uh, it will be air shifted, so we'll end up using the Holly. I'm gonna see, I need to look in the deal and see if I can command the shift off the Holly dash, or I know we can do it off the Dominator. We're just looking at uh, what we wanna use IOs for on all the harnesses and everything. So pretty much as they've been wiring the car, they've brought all the wiring up to the front of the car near the computer so then as we get the computer in here and label everything we can tie off what inputs and outputs and terminate everything up here so everything has harnesses that pretty much get to this area of the car and then we'll go from there the uh, glass is all in the car so brand new front windshield ended up reusing the rear because the glass is not that easy to get the front windshield was cracked originally the rear wasn't uh, got everything kind of in here, all the trim pieces, everything's painted real nice. So here you can see how tight everything is, trying to get an AC system in here around all the plumbing for the turbo system and everything. So 
you have the wire, uh, all the lines for the AC come up, they run along here, and then they run along the fender like in the last video. I posted that where they built the little tray for everything to sit in in here. So it's getting super tight. Here's the water lines that come up and feed the air to water intercoolers. Uh, and then you got the, the feed up here. So all that's starting to come together too. So just a few more wires, a few more pieces, but everything's pretty much here. All the front shocks are in here. We were looking at this earlier. I'm uh, gonna end up taking this bolt out spinning these around so we can actually adjust it when we're at the track. We'll see this descent. So this is the trans cooler here, and then the AC condenser here, and then the little dryer deal or whatever they consider it is mounted right here. So everything's real tight, but it all fits. Ended up, so by us rotating this, like this intake really doesn't have a throttle linkage mount. So I ended up making a throttle linkage mount off the head that comes up and holds it. So everything ties together right there. Uh, off the steam vent kit, so you want to run a steam vent kit on any of these engines where it gets all the steam from the back of the engines out of it so you don't get little hot spots up in the top of the head. So we ended up running the steam vent kit, which comes around and comes to this, and then it just feeds it back into the cooling system and gets rid of the hot vent like right here out of the corners of the head. Well, a lot of people will run the Holley 0 to 100 for the fuel pressure, so that's all installed. Ended up running another Holley 0 to 100 sensor for the radiator, if you guys can see it right there, um, we ended up putting one there. That, we ended up putting a pressure sensor in the radiator so we can watch for head gasket failure. It should hold and maintain pretty much the same pressure all the time, but if that pressure starts rising, it's because it's getting introduced from like the, the boost that the engine's making. So if it's starting to get past the head gasket and into the cooling system, we can monitor that and see it. We shouldn't ever really see any issue, but if we do, that's where we'll be able to start seeing it. Also, once the exhaust is in here and he builds the little coil, we'll end up having a back pressure sensor so we can monitor back pressure in the exhaust. So those are some extra sensors we've added into the Holly. The questions we get asked a lot on this car is are you gonna paint it? So we're, it's getting left just like it is, kind of leaving the little patina. The blue doesn't look too bad with the white top and then that's why the interior got incorporated with that type of color. Some of the things though that did get cleaned up is came in here and like painted this and just cleaned up some of these pieces. like try to restore them a little bit, just so it looks a little bit nicer, but not trying to re completely redo anything, just clean up what's already there. All right, everyone, so that's it for this video. Went ahead and gave you guys an update. The next few videos will be wiring the Holly and then probably the first fire up and then driving and tuning on the car. So if you guys wanna keep up to date with the build, make sure you guys like, subscribe, share, uh, turn on your notifications so when I post new videos, you guys will be informed. So we'll see you guys next time.